Hello and welcome to Nord News. Today is Friday, August 23rd, and I'm your host, Krista McDonald. In the past few weeks, while you were driving around town, you may have noticed a lot of road work being done. The DPW is currently working on various projects to improve the roads and water lines here in town. For more on those projects, we go to Nord News reporter Mike Maloof. There are three main projects going on in town this week. The first project, located in the high school area of town, is a small section of a bigger project to replace the gas lines here in Nord. Feeney Brothers, a subcontractor for National Grid, is replacing the gas main along there uh, from Bond Street to Elliott Street and connecting the streets of Rosemary, Shattuck Park Road, Peabody Road, West Street, and Elliott Street as well. Uh, this is part of National Grid's continuing effort to upgrade the gas system in Norwood. Many of the pipes in Norwood are old, either cast iron or, or what we call a bare steel that uh, do corrode and cause leaks. So National Grid is putting a major investment throughout the town now for the past few years and is continuing that with this work on Nickel Street. And what you'll see out there is uh, re uh, installation of a yellow uh, plastic or PVC pipe that uh, is uh, nearly indestructible if properly installed, will not corrode and will last uh, quite a bit longer than uh, anything else that's been used in the past. So, you know, thank you for your patience. It's worth it in the long run to uh, have these upgraded uh, for uh, service and for safety. The second project is a continuance of the annual cleaning and lining of the water mains. The DPW is currently tackling their largest project to date in the area of Prospect Street. Once done, roughly 70% of Norwood's 120 miles of water mains will be lined. This year's project, a combination of MWRA funds and additional half million dollars from Town of Norwood at town meeting, we're going to be cleaning and lining water mains on Prospect Street between Pine Street and Prospect Ave. Prospect Ave, uh, Fulton Street, there's a water main replacement, High Street, uh, Leiden Street, Summit Ave, and Current Ave. So it's quite a bit of work, largest project to date. Uh, what you'll see uh, right now, they'll be putting above ground water bypass because when they do clean and line the water mains that are underground, they do have to put that water main out of service. So you'll see four inch diameter pipes on the side of the road and those will be uh, supplying water to all the people in those neighborhoods. This is an ongoing effort to clean and line the water mains. Once again, it's, uh, it's going to be a long project, probably till the middle of November that they'll be completed, but well worth it in the long run. Finally, the biggest project in town this week is the repaving of Washington and Dean Streets in South Norwood. Those roadways were last paved in 1998 and were due for resurfacing. We're out there right now, day one, uh, resurfacing Washington Street and then eventually uh, Dean Street and Folan Ave. It's a two-day process, probably around 1,500 tons of hot mix asphalt will be put down and then Sunday night we'll be back here to put the pavement marking down, the center line in the uh, parking spaces and in the, and then the crosswalk. So you know, a lot of disruption. We did give advance notice with some message boards. We handed out notices to all the abutters along there. So hopefully everyone got the notice to kind of stay away from there today and tomorrow. But in the end, it's going to be a great product. Just a reminder, the Norwood Food Pantry is currently in need of donations and posted this on Facebook. We are critically low and we need your help. This time of year, our shelves are bare and we still have a high demand from hungry families. Here are the top most wanted items. Pasta and sauce, canned fruit, white tuna, canned chicken, chowders, vegetable beef, chicken noodle, minestrone, cream of mushroom, chicken, celery, canned meats, beef stew, hash, spam, chili, and crunchy peanut butter. The Norwood Food Pantry is located at 150 Chapel Street in Norwood. The entrance is at the back of the Grace Episcopal Church. They accept donations on Thursday mornings from 8.30 to 9.30 and Saturday mornings between 8.30 and 11 o'clock. Stay tuned after this break to learn how Norwood maintains its fire hydrants and for this week's Living Local.
Welcome back. Here's a Nord fun fact. There are 972 fire hydrants in the town, and many of them get a fresh paint job over the summer. Colin Ridge, who attends Bryant University, and Seamus Kelly, who attends UMass Amherst, are the DPW summer employees who are the official fire hydrant painters for the town of Nord. Jack Tolman tracked them down on Westover Parkway to see the artists in action. Colin and Seamus have known each other since their days of playing youth hockey and have developed a painting system that works for them. Me and Colin have been together doing this for uh, two years now and uh, on his first day he tried to do the red, I did the yellow. Didn't really go that well so ever since then I've been doing the red and he's been doing the yellow. Uh, once you go to a hydrant you gotta scrape it, make sure it's all the dust is off. Uh, after we scrape the hydrant we like to mix the paint just to make sure it's really thick, the hydrant, so there's no drips because if we don't mix the paint really well, all the paint on the hydrant is going to drip off and then it's not going to look good. So you got to prioritize mixing the paint really well. And then right after we mix the paint, paint the hydrant and it looks pretty good, I guess. With hundreds of hydrants located all around the town, how do they pick the ones to paint? We start with the list at the beginning of the summer and once we're done with that, uh, we go to different neighborhoods, look for ones that are rusty, dirty, um, ones that clearly, a lot of them clearly need a paint job. So. We go to those ones and paint those after we're done with our list. Steady summer jobs for college students can be tough to come by, and this long-standing Norwood tradition is a win-win for everyone. You get the job through a lottery process, and we're lucky enough to both get our numbers drawn. And uh, yeah, I just really enjoy driving around town when I'm off work and seeing all the hard work we did on the hydrants. And it's, it's really fulfilling. It's good stuff. Yeah, it's great to just drive by and see all what me and my uh, fellow DPW workers do. Just we're making a pretty big difference in the town. It's very noticeable, and it just makes me feel a little bit happy every day. If there is a hydrant near you that needs a little TLC, contact the DPW, and Colin and Seamus will work their magic. If you've ever played a musical instrument or currently play an instrument in the Nord School System, chances are that it came from K&C Music. Promotions coordinator Brian Boudreau produced this week's Living Local All About Music. If you're looking to rent a high quality musical instrument, then you have to look no further. Um, I'm Kara Collins. Um, we're at KNC Music, 273 Lenox Street in Norwood, Mass. We're school rental specialists. We rent instruments throughout Massachusetts to the students, elementary and going into high school. We rent uh, woodwinds and brass, some uh, percussion kits, and some violins. Founded in 1985 by Tom Kennedy and Jack Casey, KNC Music has worked closely with Norwood School System as well as many surrounding communities. KNC has been here for 34 years in the same spot. Um, and we haven't moved. We have, it's a great location. KNC specializes in a vast ensemble of instruments and offer great incentives to their patrons. So we have saxophones, trumpets, um, clarinets, flutes, trombones, and then we have the percussions, drums, and percussion kits. We do offer a 40% discount to anybody that wants to buy an instrument from us. Uh, we do rent with the option to buy. KNC also puts their instruments through a gentle yet thorough cleaning and maintenance process. Right now is our busy time because what happens is all the kids return their instruments. We have to clean them, get them prepared for September. Um, we have lots of repairs to do right now because a lot of the schools have their own instruments, so they have to be repaired. We have lots of cleaning to be done, and then we have to prepare the warehouses for all the school nights rentals that we have. Collins explains what it means to be on the KNC team. Uh, we all consider each other family. It's a great place to work for. Um, Jack Casey, the owner, mate, treated all of us like family. And, um, you know, we all enjoy working here. And, you know, the busy, you know, you have the busy times and you have the slow times, but, you know, we all work together great and get it done. We are off of Lenox Street, the driveway beside Jim's Automotive. Give us a call at any time at 781-769-6520. You can also get us on uh, our website, which is www.knc.music.com. 
We also have a Facebook page, um, KNC Music. Stay tuned after this break to find out what is happening in your local government. Welcome back to Newer News. The Zoning Board of Appeals anticipated a large crowd for their Tuesday meeting with the only agenda item being a proposed asphalt plant on University Ave. The application was met with heavy opposition from the public. Town Manager Tony Mizuko later reported at the Selectman's meeting that over 200 letters had been sent to Town Hall opposing the plant. There was no actual hearing due to the applicant pulling out at the last moment. After the applicant for the asphalt plant pulled their application, Selectman Chairman Paul Bishop read the following statement at the conclusion of the Selectman's meeting the same night. We have several appointments tonight, but before we start, I would just like to say that the, uh, zoning, appeal, the zoning Board of Appeals had a, uh, a hearing scheduled tonight at 7.15 regarding the asphalt, proposed asphalt factory application on University Avenue. The, uh, the lawyers for the applicant have withdrawn the application so at this point in time there will be no further action regarding a asphalt factory on University Avenue. But before I conclude I just want to thank my colleague to my right William Plaskow who did an outstanding job rallying everybody together to, uh, to bring this to a conclusion and I want to thank him for that. The Board of Selectmen will meet again on Tuesday September 3rd and will begin meeting every week. The Conservation Commission met Wednesday night to cover a few agenda items. The board approved a certificate of compliance for a Norwood Light project, as well as a notice of intent on a Norwood Light transmission line. The conservation agent report was given, and the end of the meeting included discussion of future agenda items. The next Conservation Commission meeting will be Wednesday, September 4th. Thursday night, the Town Meeting Rules Committee met to cover a number of agenda items. The committee get, began with an election of a secretary, then started the discussion on the consent agenda. Following the consent agenda discussion, the committee covered the non-rule recommendations to increase the efficiency of town meeting. The meeting ended with additional proposed town meeting rule changes. The town meeting rules committee will meet again in the upcoming weeks. For complete government coverage, tune into the NCM government channel or watch it on demand at norwoodcommunitymedia.org. Stay tuned after this break to find out what is happening in your schools. Welcome back. This week we bring you a story from NHS students about a really cool vintage market here in Norwood. In a hot spot for old antiques, It's Time in Norwood is the place to find vintage collectibles. Owner Jacqueline Spada says she's got some old but interesting items. I think the um, oldest collectible I would have here are some of the older books. I have some from the late 1800s and the early 1900s. I love things that have a story behind them and that have a little bit of a history. It's Time is located in the Winsmith Mill Market, a 27-acre complex housing 14 shops run by local artists and craftsmen. Spada says it's a perfect destination for her collectibles. The Winsmith Mills is an awesome, um, um, it's a destination for people. So there's a lot of foot traffic and I thought it was a great place to try to have a shop and it's been really fun. One thing that makes Spada's shop unique is that all of the collectibles were previously owned by her and to sell those items she had to make a big change in her life. Actually we've had a lot of um, people, um, parents and aunts and uncles that have passed and we've inherited a lot of this stuff. Uh, my husband and I had um, sold our family home of 33 years and um, we decided to um, 
try to um, pass on our collection to other people who may enjoy them. When Spada first decided to open an antique shop, she wanted to find the perfect name. And while there are a lot of timepieces in her store, its time has a bigger meaning than just clocks. Something popped into my head like, you know, it's time. And um, it, to me it was almost like a, a play on words too because not only could it be it's time, like it is time, it's also it's time, like, you know, this, par this particular, you know, item's time. And while Spada says she has a passion for antiques and collectibles, it's the interaction with customers that she really enjoys. It's great to talk to people like-minded like myself that like things that are older and um, uh, just to hear their stories. And they all have their own um, collectibles that they collect and um, they all have stories of finding that, you know, looking for that holy grail of their collectible. Spada and her store have been open for a few months now and even though business can be slow at times, she's really not worried about sales. But once I'm in here, I just feel like I belong here and, um, and it's just very comfortable and um, if I sell something I sell something if I don't I don't so I don't have to like sell everything to um, to, to make a living it's this is more almost like a hobby so it's been amazing so if you're looking for antique jewelry China books or just some really cool vintage collectibles it's time for you to stop by spade a shop at the Winsmith mill reporting for Mustang magazine I'm Brianna LeBlanc Hello there and welcome to the sports update. My name is Brian Dunn and for those of you that have patiently waited, you've made it because the fall sports season has officially begun. Tryouts and practices will be taking place throughout the week and scrimmage can start as early as this Saturday when Norwood Football will be hosting Sharon up at the football field. For more information on practice scheduling, you can visit NorwoodMustangs.com and keep it here on NCM for social media for breakdowns of each team's home schedule and when we'll be going live. For now, I'll leave you with a little preview of the action for fall sports come the regular season. Thank you everyone and as always, Go Mustangs! Thanks, Brian. Go Mustangs. Last weekend, runners from Norwood and the surrounding towns gathered at the Space Center for the second annual Craft Brew 5K. For more on this fun event, we go to race director Jim Henry. Annual Craft Brew 5K here at uh, the Norwood Space Center, hosted by Percival Brewing Company. Um, this year's race was uh, done to uh, benefit the Schultz Guest House in Dedham, which uh, is a rescue center for dogs. And they have some here today that are uh, running around. Um, and um, each year we'll do this race. We rotate the charities through. And I'm very happy with how things went today. We've got live music. And uh, we had about 170 runners that everyone seemed to uh, really enjoy themselves. And uh, they're enjoying some brick fire pizza, some um, healthy uh, bowls from uh, Central Market in South Norwood. And it's a, been a great event. The Craft Brew 5K wasn't the only race going on last weekend. Over 100 Norwood residents and NHS alumni braved the Cape traffic and traveled to Falmouth for the annual Falmouth Road Race. The 7.1 mile race from Woods Hole to the Falmouth Heights is one of the great Cape traditions. Most of the runners were part of various fundraising groups raising money for charities such as Dana-Farber, Journey to Parenthood and countless others. Congrats to those who finished the race even in those hot and humid conditions. Fernando Morales lost his battle with cancer in 2015. His family continues his battle with the Fernando's Fight Forever, raising funds for Ewing Sarcoma Research through a variety of events, including the Jimmy Fun Walk on September 22nd. On this Saturday, August 24th at 2 p.m., the Morales family will be hosting their annual family barbecue for Fernando's Fight Forever in their backyard at 76 Westover Parkway. All are welcome to attend, and it's a great way to meet your neighbors. Just bring a lawn chair and a salad or appetizer if you'd like. The goal is to raise funds for Ewing Sarcoma Research through the Jimmy Fund. At this event, soda cans and bottles will be collected for the deposits, clothes and shoes in good condition, and donations for their Jimmy Fund walk team. If you can't attend and would like to donate to their team, Fernando's Fight Forever, visit the website danafarber.jimmyfund.org slash go to slash Fernando's Fight. 
Well, that's all for NOAA News. To stay up to date with NOAA Community Media, follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend.